In this video, I want to share with you some tips for successful study habits and test taking. Some of these are from my own experience and others are from students I've had over the past 10 years. You can also find lots of advice online about what makes studying effective. Here's one such post. However, it is important to realize that there is no one-size-fits-all method for effective studying. What works for one person may or may not work for you. This video will give you some ideas about how to approach studying and how to best use your study time. However, you will need to figure out what works best for you. As with anything, it takes practice to become good at studying and taking tests. Once you figure out what techniques work for you, practice will give you the confidence you need to be successful in any class. To get the most out of any class or lecture, it is important that you come to class prepared. I've seen the starry-eyed look in students' eyes when they come to class cold, not having opened the book without any idea of what the day's lecture will be on. This can make the lecture feel overwhelming. No one likes that. I've also had students tell me with surprise that reading the chapter before lecture really helps the lecture make more sense, and it makes the material easy to grasp. You too may be surprised to find that preparing for lecture really does help you get more out of the lecture. Here are the steps I recommend to get the most out of any class. Before reading the assigned chapter, get an idea of what topics are important by looking over the lecture outline or study lists. This is what I call the preview step. Here you will find important questions, topics, and terms covered in the lecture and reading assignment. This will let you know what to pay attention to when reading. Next, read the assigned chapters and articles before going through the lecture. This will give you a base from which to better understand the lecture. Take notes while watching the lecture videos. All of the videos are captioned, so turn on closed captioning if this helps you. The nice thing about the videos is you can pause them when you need to write something down or go back to hear something again. You may find it helpful to take notes on a copy of the lecture slides. Lecture slides are posted online. Taking notes in class is a good way to stay focused on the lecture. And if you looked over the lecture outline or study list before the video, you will know what to focus on during lecture. Lecture outlines or study lists contain learning objectives, important topics, and terms. These are provided to help you narrow down what to focus on when studying. I recommend that you complete lecture outlines the same day as you view the lecture. This will help you remember as much as possible from the lecture. Previous students agree, completing lecture outlines on the same day as you hear the lecture helps you retain more from the lecture than waiting to do the outlines on another day. As you complete the outlines, make a note of any questions you have. Post your questions on the weekly discussion forum to get answers from your peers. If a good answer is not provided, I will comment with an answer at the end of the week. You can also use your textbook to look up any questions. You may decide to do this on another day or make a note to ask your instructor. Taking an online class is different from a face-to-face -face class in that students need to be more disciplined about keeping up with the course schedule and assignments as one doesn't have to show up to a physical class twice a week. With the flexibility of scheduling time for the class comes responsibility to actually spend time on the class regularly each week. Here I've listed a few tips for success in online classes. First and foremost is to make a reasonable schedule you can keep up with. I think it's best to schedule an hour or two to devote to class five days a week rather than trying to complete a week's worth of work in a single day. In any case, you want to look at your schedule and see where the online class fits in best, then block off time just as you would for a face-to-face -face class. It's important to schedule protected time to work on your online class because it's far too easy to put off classwork for other things that come up. Then by the end of the week, your available time is often used up and you haven't completed work needed for the online course. Don't fall into this bad habit. Instead, use a calendar and schedule a regular time twice a week or more to view lecture videos. You will also need to schedule time 
to complete reading, time to study, time to work on assignments, and time to participate in the discussion board. Participation in the discussion board for an online class is a record of your participation in class, just as attendance is for a face-to-face -face class. The discussion board offers easy points and is a great way to learn from your peers. Take advantage of this resource. Secondly, I find students who use study partners to work with in class have better success than students who work alone. Find someone early on who you can work with on course material, either in person or online. Working with someone else in the class will help you stay on schedule with the course and offers yet another resource when you come across questions. Lastly, as you go through the lecture videos and study lists, post questions you have on the discussion board. Or if you are working on an assignment and are unclear about something, email your instructor. Ask questions right away as opposed to spending all of your study time on one or two questions. Once you have done the reading, attended lecture, and completed your study guides, such as lecture outlines, it's time to study. You will want to review the information and test yourself to see what you can recall. The best piece of advice I can give is to make your study time active and try to simulate the test experience. You can do this by quizzing yourself and saying the answer out loud without looking at your notes. Or write out the answers to questions. Or write out explanations of concepts and definitions of terms. Many students like to use a study partner or group. The group can discuss confusing topics and work together to master the information. Successful students I've had in the past have said that they use their notes to write questions covering the material that is going to be on the test. Then they study these questions, quizzing themselves. This works to simulate the test experience. Both writing questions and answering them makes studying active. This can be done individually or in groups. When you answer questions without looking at your notes, it's a good way to check to see if you really know the information. Often you will discover other questions you have. This is the time you want to find out if you have questions while studying, not during the exam. By quizzing yourself, you will see what information you know and what topics you are still a little unsure about. This will help you direct your studying to topics you need to work on. If you don't already have solid study skills, don't be discouraged. You can develop them. Try different strategies and see which ones work for you. Are you an auditory learner? A past student of mine found that if she recorded herself reading her notes, then listened to the recording, it helped her remember the information. Studying is not all about memorization, though. It's important to understand how concepts work so you can apply them. You need a balance of memorizing the definitions of terms and understanding concepts. Lastly, most students find, and many studies show, that when you teach something, to others, it helps you better understand and remember it too. This is where study groups can be helpful. Teaching others will help you retain the information. This is also the idea behind the weekly discussion board. As you type out answers to other students' questions, you will better understand the topic. The weekly discussion board is a great place to ask any sort of question related to the lecture material without the pressure of asking a question in class. I will read over the weekly discussion posts and follow up on any unanswered questions at the end of each week. You will want to make your study time as effective and efficient as possible. The one thing we are all short on is time. No one has enough. So try to make your study time effective. Begin by scheduling distraction-free time to devote to studying. During this time, only focus on information related to the class. That may mean turning off your phone, closing your email, and closing other distractions like Facebook, Twitter, etc. Many, many studies have shown that focusing on several things at once lessens your ability to concentrate. The ability for humans to multitask is a myth. Here is a TED Talk that focuses on this. If you focus your attention on one thing at a time, you'll be able to complete it more quickly and do a better job. Here, too, are a couple of articles. 
that talk about studies showing that multitasking actually makes it harder to finish a task and do a good job at it. So do yourself a favor and schedule study time where you focus only on one thing, studying. Don't fall into the trap of multitasking as the quality of your work will suffer. When making your schedule, it is important that you are realistic in the time commitment it takes to do well in a class. A three unit class is defined as having three hours of in-class time per week. Most sources will say that students need to spend six to nine hours outside of class each week for a three unit class. That's a lot of time. This is even more reason to figure out how you study best. You want to be effective and efficient so you don't have to spend so much time at it. Keep in mind that summer classes are scheduled at a pace that is two times or three times faster than the regular semester. This means you will need to multiply the time you spend outside of class by two to three times. This time should be spent reading, watching lecture videos, studying, and completing assignments. Lastly, as I said earlier, if you make your study time active, you will retain more. Here are some examples of passive and active studying. Passive activity includes watching lecture videos, reading the textbook, reading your notes or lecture outlines, and looking over lecture slides, etc. Now don't get me wrong, you need to do these things, but many times students think they are finished studying after completing the items on this list of passive activities. These should help you become ready for active studying. Active studying includes diagramming processes, answering questions from the lecture outline, writing out your own questions covering the lecture material and answering them, and coming up with memory tools, such as mnemonics or stories or songs. These memory tools may seem silly, but they work. You can always search online for ideas for new mnemonics or songs to help you remember common topics such as the stages of mitosis, etc. I want to come back to the online discussion board for a moment. This is a place for you to ask questions from your peers. It's meant to be a forum for students to ask and answer questions for each other. No question is too small or silly. If you are stuck on an item on the lecture outline or study list, instead of spending lots of time agonizing over it, post this question on the discussion board. Also, answering other students' questions will help you. It helps you better understand and remember the topic when you explain it and type it out for someone else. Be as specific as possible with your questions and answers. This is a great time to practice using scientific terminology. You will need to become familiar and comfortable with terminology. This will make it less stressful when you see such terms on the exam. When using the discussion board, begin by searching for key terms in your question. This will help you see if others have posted similar questions where you can follow up with your understanding of the topic and your question. If the topic hasn't been discussed yet, then you can create a new thread to post your question. Lastly, participation in the discussion board provides easy points for the class. Don't be nervous about participating. We were all beginners once and no one is here to judge you. I hope we can create a welcoming learning environment together. I want to end with some tips for doing well on tests. You've probably heard some of these before. Forget all-nighters. It's better to be well rested so you can recall information at your best. Studies have shown that any benefits of added study time gained by studying all night are lost as you are tired and not thinking clearly. Schedule your study time, figure out what works for you, and be focused and dedicated with the time you have to study. Then get a good night's rest before the exam. Just as important as rest is to relax during the test. Find a strategy that helps you to relax. I have had students literally have anxiety attacks because they were so wound up about a test. They knew the information and ended up doing well, but only after they got past their anxiety and settled down. Nerves can get the best of anyone. 
Think of a strategy to help you relax so you can work at your best during exam time. You also want to schedule a time to take the test when you won't have any distractions. Ideally, take online tests at a time of day when you work best. Something I think is helpful for making better choices on multiple choice tests is to use scratch paper. Whether you are taking a test in the classroom or on a computer, you can use scratch paper to jot down what you think the answer is after reading the question, but before looking at the answer choices. Many times, putting what you know on paper instead of keeping it all in your working memory can help you better interpret the answer choices and make a better choice. This only takes a few seconds to jot down what you think the answer is before reading the answer choices. When you read scientific terminology, jot down the definition. If you are still having trouble choosing an answer, you may want to outline or diagram out related information to help you better understand the question and answer choices. You can also brainstorm related terms and info to aid your recall. Use plenty of scratch paper so your notes don't become crowded and confusing. Time management is also important when taking a test. I'm sure you've all heard to skip difficult questions and come back to them at the end of the test. Answering easy questions first can help ease your nerves and help you feel ready to take on tougher questions. However, with online classes, certain measures are taken to make it difficult for students to simply look up the answers to questions as they take exams at home unsupervised. This is why I typically set the test to show one question at a time and backtracking to review submitted answers is not permitted. This is no different than the setup used when I took the GRE on a computer in preparation for graduate school, except I was in a proctored computer lab. The flexibility of taking an online test is balanced with the inconvenience of answering questions one at a time. But just like a face-to-face -face class, the time allowed for a test is limited. The time I allow for an online test is the same as if the test were given in person. Typically, one minute is allowed for multiple choice questions, a little less for true-false questions, and five minutes or more for short answer or short essay questions. Keep these numbers in mind as you budget your time on a test. In Blackboard, there is a countdown timer in the test window that keeps track of your time. Thinking of time management, it is also possible to go through the test too quickly. If you find that you have lots of time left over at the end of the test, try to slow down next time. As amazing as it sounds, I've had students who finish very quickly make a conscious effort to slow down and read more carefully on the next test and improve their score significantly. I can't emphasize enough the importance of reading the questions and answers carefully. Pay attention to key words like accept or terminology to help you fully understand the question and answers and make the best choice. My tests are not meant to trick you, but to see what you have mastered of the lecture material. If you use the provided study outlines, etc., you should be prepared to do well on the test.